Welcome to Infinite Transcendence, and today I want to talk about a, probably a very controversial subject in a lot of circles, and that's why you don't need religion in your life. And religion is something that's seen as something, again, you're supposed to do, it's natural, it's necessary, it's how you, it's the crux of, it's like the centerpiece of being a good person. If you're religious, you have a good person, if you're a good person, you have to have a religion, you believe in God, you're faithful, you you have good values and good morals you're a good caring person you care about people you you're helpful you do well in society religion is seen a lot as that your religion is also is commonly associated with other values that people have whether they're true or not and people often say i'm a religious person i'm a god-fearing person they, and even in politics radio other formats you'll see people bring up religion as a way to gain instant credibility um even today whereas even to even with all the scandals and things that happen with the religion, religion still overall carries this connotation. If I tell a person, well, I'm a religious person, I go to church, or I believe in God, people automatically assume to some extent that I'm a good person, I'm a caring, compassionate person, that I'm there to be helpful and that can be trusted. And a lot of people associate that with that. But is that actually true? Do you need to be religious to have that? Con Why is that even necessary? Do you need to be religious to have that connotation? Is it necessary at all? What's the purpose of religion? Do you is it does it even serve a purpose? Is it necessary today? Because if it was unnecessary, why is it still around after so long? Those are the kind of things I want to delve into today in this topic. And this is going to be a, probably a bit of a longer topic because I'm changing the formatting a bit, where I'm making longer articles and longer recordings and trying to do it in longer, get into more detail. So let's get into this. Like for me, let's start with my past. As in my own past. I was a typical church-going family, nothing exceptional. I don't think we were over the top. Like, just, we were the go to church on Sunday, sometimes on Wednesday kind of family. Typical, you know, cursing was bad, violence was kind of bad, sex was really bad on TV, that, that kind of typical American family. Nothing over the top, nothing, nothing unusual in a religious household. We were we didn't talk about God all day every day. We didn't speak about God. We weren't those we weren't Bible thumping levels of religion. We went to church on Sunday. You go home. You do your thing, and then you go back to church on Sunday. You talk about what you did. And you go back. Like in our house, we went to church, came home, and then that was that. You, you know, it was almost like in a lot of cases it was just that's one thing I want to delve into later is that it was you know you go to church or something you did you went home it was ignored you went back to your old routine that was what we were like growing up and I went to church and I you know I followed along with it. It didn't seem out of the ordinary to me. You know, you figure you go to church, you believe in God, and the question it is weird, you know, it's wrong, you don't do it. Now, as I got older, as I got older, I'd say, you know, as the years went by, even like in, say, middle school, I started to question more things. I started to think about more things. I started to ask questions. And they would try to answer them sometimes, and sometimes they would get, they would just say, you know, you just need to believe. And I never liked that, even as a religious person, as a formerly religious person, I'm not anymore. When I was told, you know, you just need to accept it, you just need to believe in it, just have faith, I didn't think that was a sufficient answer. Why should I just give my life up and my beliefs up to something with no real proof or no real a answer? And even as I got as I further, as I got older, even more of these questions rose more and more and my beliefs on things changed. I, even on my old form, I used to have, we used to have discussions on things like, you know, waiting before you're married to have sex and other issues. And people often say, well, the Bible says so. To me, that wasn't a sufficient answer. Because even if, what if you're not religious? A lot of people aren't religious. Why would they want to wait? What, what's the logical reason behind these things? Are you just doing these things because you're told you're supposed to? Even though I was still religious then, to some extent, I started to think it, a lot of it was nonsense. I was at the point where I believed and I went, I guess, out of habit or, you know, just out of, Happy, yeah, I had a habit or just family beliefs or whatever the reason was, but I started to grow more and more out of it. And I started to develop my own, more of my own beliefs on my own things and more of my own identity. An interesting part about it is, as I hit my mid teens somewhere, I actually found out that my father's side of the family, my biological father's side of the family, is heavily religious. So they're church going. My grandfather is a pastor. He was a pastor, then he stopped for a while because he was a mechanic as well. He had his own mechanic shop, own car shop. He had a gas station and everything, but he stopped. And then he became, he became, I guess, a pastor again in my later teens. And I went and saw him. He lived all the way out in Yazoo. So we would go all the way out to miss, way out in Mississippi, like a two-hour drive to go see him preach. And it was a long, it was like a long drive for a 30-minute sermon. But, I, you know, he was very religious. Like, like my, my father, he, he didn't talk about it much. He didn't mention it much in his own life because he wasn't going to church regularly. He was, a, like I said, a massive, uh, he was into other things time, you know, women mainly. 
So we didn't. He, he he himself didn't mention it much. Now, as I've gotten older, he's gone more back into it. But he wasn't it then. But it was just interesting that I found that out later on. But as it for me, I started to grow more and more out of it to the point where I just felt it was unnecessary. Then later on, as I got older, went through more experiences, saw different things. I started to say, you know, it just it just seemed un- it was even like a like for me, it wasn't this heartbreaking moment. I didn't feel down and out, and I didn't have a lot of trauma or hurt. Or I said, you know. I'm just going to stop being religious. For me, it just seemed unnecessary, I guess, from a utilitarian standpoint or from a pragmatic standpoint. It's like, what do I need the religion for? What does it actually even do for me? I mean, I get up, I set my own goals, I accomplish my own things in life, I do what I want to, and I don't need to be religious to do it. So what do I need it for? And I think that's when I started to slowly and surely get out of it. And I think after listening to certain things, uh, I know a lot of Tom Likas, I got into a lot of that. Um, for entertainment value, and I would listen to him talk about how he's atheist. I remember when I first heard it, I was like, you know, I don't agree with that, but I like a lot of other things he said. But then I eventually just stopped going. I just didn't, I went less and less, and it just didn't seem important. I mean, I had the same, I'm a still, I'm a still a good person, or a quote unquote. Yeah, ideally, I would be a good person, or whatever that word means. Whether I went to church or not, I don't just become a bad person because I stopped going to church. It's not like my values, it's not like my overall values and principles on life change. So I just stopped doing it. So that's, as a background, that would be my story on why I got out of it so that now that you know what happened with me particularly so you're going to get a more of a personal background with me now in terms of religion why do I feel is unnecessary well there are several reasons I want to get into I believe religion a lot of times it doesn't help you grow I believe religion inhibits growth people say religion helps you grow but I find the biggest thing is that that's contradictory. It doesn't help you grow. It doesn't make you a grow. Growth in life is a conscious choice. You grow because you choose to indulge in patterns and habits that make you a better person or a more complete or well-rounded person. You choose to improve in your health, fitness, social skills, inner strength, mental strength, emotional strength. Those are things you're doing as a conscious and habitual practice. You're getting out of your comfort zone. You're doing new things. The things I've discussed on here many times. That's how you grow and develop as a person. Now, when it comes to religion, what they want to do is it, it doesn't and grow, it, rel- it limits growth because your growth is based on what they tell you to do. Your growth is based on the values of that church. Your growth is based on this idea that I need to surrender myself to a supreme being, to God. You got to surrender yourself to a God, to a supreme being to live a full, complete life. And if you don't do this, you're not going to live that full, complete life. You're going to be lacking. You're going to be your life's not going to be complete. It's not you're not re- living the right path. Even if I were growing and doing a better doing things in my life that are better, I'm still not growing. So your growth is limited because you're surrendering uh, the authority in your life over to another figure. And as I've discussed before, one of the biggest, most important parts of growth in life and to live a life of freedom is to take personal responsibility. Because if you don't take personal responsibility, you cannot live a free life. Because when you take responsibility for your own life, you say that I can control my life. My life is under my life is under my control. My life is something that I can control and make of, of what I want. I'm in, I own my life. If you don't have self-ownership, you don't have religion. When you, have, when you're, you don't have a personal free life. But when you have religion, you don't own yourself. God owns you. You're, you're, you're a servant to God. You're a God. You're one of, you're, he's the shepherd. You're the flock. And this is deliberate. So if from that mindset, how do you grow? Your growth is much more limited because your growth is based on the beliefs and ideologies of others that tell you how you should grow and what you should do. In a lot of cases, people stagnate. They use God. They use religion as a crutch. You know, God must not want me to get a better job. God, God must not want me to take this risk. God must not want me to do these things. I, you know, God's going to fix my problems for me. We've heard this one. God's going to make things better. God has a plan. God's going to take care of things. You know, you know. I just God blesses some and so doesn't bless others. These sayings are of people who don't take control of their life and they let religion take control of their life and they take a more passive approach to life and that's a, a, a not a good way to live if you want to grow and improve your life which i imagine if you're listening to this website or you're watching it or reading it whatever you're doing that's what you want to do so i find that religion is anti-growth it's not pro-growth you're submitting your life and you're giving it up to another another being and another reason is that religion is alienating i i find that you know, if, if people have, if I meet people all the time with different growth, different beliefs, different. Some people are married, some people aren't. Some people are this, that, straight, gay, different hobbies, different lifestyles. People do drugs, some don't. People do things I don't agree with personally, but I accept that part of them. And I realize, hey, everyone has a different life. People don't want to all live my life. People want to, people have different goals in life. But with religion, I mean, it's basically taught to you that, you know, religion is the way to live. You're living the right way. And if people aren't living the way you live, there's something wrong with them. They need to be fixed. They need to be changed. So they either see you as a victim or they see you as a sad, uh, something that needs to be fixed, or they see you 
at worst as an enemy and in a lot of not just in western religion this isn't as big of a deal but it was in the past and throughout history you've seen lots of violence and wars based on this based on this principle that you know if you're not with us you're against us and i know even with me now i talk to people who are family members and close friends who are religious still and and the topic comes up and i tell them i'm not or i don't do it anymore and they just they see me as something's wrong with me they start trying to drill that religion into my head and trying to tell me i need to go do this and do that and what i always find astounding is their life they don't have their own life together my life is great look i'm always trying to improve my life but i can't complain about my life i'm doing a lot of things i want i'm constantly getting out of my comfort zone i'm constantly doing more and more i'm doing new things and meanwhile, they're struggling, barely getting by, don't plan, don't save, make lots of bad decisions, have kids without plan planning or thinking, do all kinds of irresponsible, stupid things. And then they want to have dumb, awful relationships they don't ever get out of. And then they want to tell me that I need to get my life on track because I'm not following the religion they believe they can follow. And how do you answer to that? How do you, you can't help but alienate people with that, that mindset. So that was one of the things, it, even, even from that point of view, it is, it's just an alienating thing. So... Get your own life and gear. Stop worrying about other people's lives, and and, and 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 welcome people. They say not to judge, but they judge anyways. I find people religion the most judgmental people of all. And religion is often used. Another reason the religion is a, a tool of violence and controlling others. I mean, it's not that religion itself is inherent. I want to make a distinction. It's not that religion itself leads to it. It's just that religion is used as a tool to do it. Just like government and other agencies, these powerful institutions use control and fear and things like that to get what they want from other people and a power they have and they say power corrupts people often who get in these positions are often corrupt and have other designs and other other intentions and they use those to get what they want i mean the temptation is just too strong we've heard tons of stories about people exploiting churches you've heard a lot of the a lot of these churches uh, not to mention a lot of violence a lot of uh five really people who are religious like to fight and try to fight over land we've all known about that and I mean, a religion is just a powerful institution. They sell, they sell favors. They have a lot of people. The Catholic Church owns a lot of real estate. They're very powerful. And, and, and they care about money and power just like the rest of us. And a lot of things they do, I don't even agree with. For instance, you know, going to poor countries, some people can barely feed themselves and reproduce a lot. Is that something res irresponsible to do? Well, no, it's not. But the reason they do this, the reason the church tells you to be fruitful and multiply is why? Because they want offspring. They want more con converted people. And when a person's religious has a kid, 99 times out of 100 they're going to beat the religion to their kid so of course they want people to be fruitful and multiply but when these people are struggling and starving what do they turn to they turn to religion because they believe in religion to fix their problems and then when these people struggle then others have to bail them out for that a lot of things they do that from from top to bottom that i don't agree with at all but these religion religious institutions have control and they'll do and they'll do whatever they want to or to get what they want and Another thing, you know, on, and related to that, you'll have that religion supports a lot of corrupt individuals and a lot of freeloaders. You know, along with that, you know, we've all heard about the pedophiles. But not, it's not just bad because every institution has good, everything has good and bad. You can have good and bad people in school, government, business, and church, and whatever else. There's only be your bad apples. But the problem here is not only were these guys constantly just moved around to different churches or different schools, they also get expensive lawyers to defend these guys at the expense of the people who go to the church. So you're supporting defend these guys and to support these guys who are abusing your own children. That's crazy. And you got a lot of, I, even around here, there's a lot of, I remember one story at church I went to that the the pastor has a family, I went with my family when I was younger, the pastor there, the pastor's son, he was kind of, he's like, a, he's a pastor too. He got in trouble for money laundering. He was caught doing things he shouldn't have been doing, pimping his church out, basically. He, uh, he apologized about it, and then he got caught money laundering, and he was money laundering and selling church property uh, uh, without consent, and he got in trouble and went to jail for that. And he was a state representative. You see a lot of these stories. You have a lot of uh, st uh, pa pastors getting accused of molestation. A lot of these pastors scamming people and basically saying, you know, it's all about the money, and you, you, uh, you'll even see videos of these, these pastors pimping out their church, and people just continue to go because I guess if everybody's together, you can't be wrong. You can't be wrong if everybody is if everybody's doing something together. You can't be wrong. A lot of this is just mass influence, and people and these pastors prey on that. These are charismatic individuals who use that power to get what they want. They know people in large groups once they become charmed or enamored with an idea will do almost anything, and it shows by looking at these leaders who do this. Many corrupt individuals, many people like that, and it's not just that they're there because everything you always. And by the way, these people are tax. These institutions are tax free, so not only are they being supported, other people are being supported, supporting them through taxes. They use up services that are paid for by the rest of us, and they still benefit from it. And these churches are a lot of these churches are very well off and do very well.
And it's nice that they do donations and things like that, but you can donate on your own. You can be generous on your own. You don't need to go to church to be generous or donate. And uh, uh, the, on top of that, yeah, mismanagement of money, that's another issue. Another church I went to when I was younger, this was a very small church. A pastor was there, young, I guess he was a younger pastor, pretty ambitious. He had the idea to move from a much smaller church that I believe at the time had about a 2,000 month rent. It was a small church to a much larger building to like a $10,000 a month rent. Didn't have enough savings, nothing. He just believed he was going to make it work. It's like a bad business plan. You just like these people I know who, who throw out all this money into a business hoping it's going to work without having any customers or any real plan. They just throw lots of money into it. And of course, it failed. And a few months later, he was back and, and went back to the old church. And uh, at that time, a lot of people just quit, including our family. And I think now I saw him of some years back, and I think now he just runs a church out of his house or something. I mean, you see a lot of people who just irresponsible, mismanage money, and, and they people will stick around with them. You know, in a business, in a business, if I'm irresponsible, if I manage, if I mismanage my own resources, I'm done. There's no bailout. Well, no bailout for me. I guess some governments bail out some institutions, but they should not be doing, which I don't believe in that. That's wrong. But, you know, if vast majority of businesses, if they fail and manage their money poorly, they lose their business and they should because it should be survival of the fittest. But you see a lot of these corrupt schemes and people like that in these institutions because these institutions trying to kind of breed that. And another reason, one of, of close to the final reasons is religion is full of contradictions and nonsense. A lot of things that don't make sense, double standards, hypocrisy, and inconsistencies. Lots of outdated practices, lots of things that are swept under the rug in terms of race and sex. that used to be in the Bible, especially gender-wise. They used to be in the Bible that are no longer there or that are no longer mentioned or dealt with because it's offensive, it's politically incorrect. I know one church in our area or that I remember had like a gay bar because I remember a lot of these churches, they'll say, you know, being gay is bad and being gay is wrong. And I think now that you see more and more gay people coming out and going to church, they don't want to alienate that audience because they want to make money. And you'll see that a lot of these churches, not only that, these churches are starting to also lose a, lose a lot of sh men. A lot of men are not going to church anymore. It's kind of like the college campuses. It's the same phenomenon there. There's lots of women and older people because a lot of young men have lost sight of the uh, lost interest. A lot of it's male bashing. A lot of it's shaming language, telling men to step up and take responsibility while, while you know, giving them no incentive to. It's blaming men for everything, taking the women's side. And a lot of these guys just lose interest and don't want to go anymore. And you see that too, but you also see like a lot of yeah, you know, a lot of contradictions, a lot of nonsense, a lot of crazy laws, a lot of outdated terminologies, a lot of outdated laws, a lot of mishmash of other culture, a lot of religious things. You come from, for instance, paganism. You'll see a lot of that in religion. There's a you know people. You, I'm sure most people today don't believe in people coming back from the dead and these mystical storms or things like that, but we accept them as like myth or story. But a lot of people do. But there are some people who are fundamentalists who do believe in everything in the Bible. I think a lot of people say, well, that's just silly. They're just stories. But, I mean, at what point are you either dumb or you hypocritical or you apologist? You know a lot of things there don't make sense, but you follow it anyways. Well, a lot of people follow these things. They believe that if they believe in these things and follow them, they're going to go to heaven. If they just, you know, sign on to it and just agree to it, they'll go to heaven anyways and not have to worry about. They'll be safe and secure. So they just believe in it anyways, even though a lot of it's stupid. Because if that's what you believe in, it's not going to work. You can't fool. If you believe God is all knowing and all, all powerful, you can't fool him. He's going to know you don't believe, which is another reason why it's so stupid is that you can't fake believing in something. And people say you need to believe. How do you believe something? If I told you Santa Claus, well, <clears throat> or if I told you a fictional, if I told you Spider-Man or Superman was real in real life, you know I, you, I couldn't force you to believe in it because you know it doesn't exist in, in real life. You know it's fantasy. So how do you expect you to believe in something you just don't believe in? You can't force yourself to believe in something you don't. And if God is all-knowing, he's going to know that it's ridiculous. So there's that aspect. Do you become stupid or do you become hypocritical or what do you do? And then religion is forced, finally religion is forced compassion and fear. Compassion should be a natural part of your compassion and kind or whatever. That should be a part of your life in day-to-day -day life, not something you do on Sunday and go home. You can't force compassion. You can't force caring about people. And a lot of these religions are about you should care. You should. You can't. If you had to make a scripture and diatribe about how to care about people and make and make it a practice and an obligation, it's not caring. It's the same thing. The reason I hate gifts and a lot of these obligations. If I got to get it for you, it's not a gift. It's a payment. And a lot of people believe that you know. <clears throat> If I do this and that, I'm gonna I'm just gonna earn my way to heaven, or I'm gonna do the right thing and just earn it through these acts and tasks. But you should be compassionate because you want to be compassionate, not because you feel it's an obligation or because you want to be liked by others. That's not true compassion. Now, religion markets fear. 
That's what religion is. And now, and now in the Western Hemisphere, churches can't kill you for not being religious, but they scare you. You know, when you're young, if you don't believe, you're going to go to hell. You're unclean. You're a sinner. You're wrong. You're you're dis, you're un, you're 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 you're, bo you're a bottom of the wrong being without God in your life. And a lot of these kids have been told this and brainwashed by their parents who then believe when they grow up for no reason other than that's what they were told. Now, it'd be one thing if you weren't religious, your parents just let you figure it out on your own and you decide to be religious. I have a lot more understanding and respect for that. But a lot of these people just took their kids and brainwashed them with this. And now they fall out of no other reason than fear. What kind of religion is that where you have to go through fear? It's like once they can't get you to do something through, you know, you're going to live happy afterlife, they got to scare you to do it. And they, have to, they have to plan the most primal human urge or human trait, which is fear. People fear and they'll run or they'll obey and they'll cower in. And that's one of the uh, final reasons that well, that is the final reason why I believe that religion, you don't need religion in your life. You don't, you don't need religion in your life. You know, you don't know what life's, what, you know, when you're dead, and you're, my, you're just dead, in my opinion. Now, if you believe something's going to happen, that's fine, but you can't prove it, you don't know. And my, you make the most out of your life. Make your life, take control of your life and make the most out of what you can. And live your life to the fullest. You can be caring and kind and help others and take care of others and be a good person, and all those things, and make your life the best it can be and live an outstanding life. And in most cases, you live a more outstanding life than a lot of people who live their life in religion because religion. Uh, for, honestly, people who are less educated tend to be religious. People who are poor tend to be religious, and people who str a lot of other uh, negative attributes who, for people who are religious. And I think there's a reason for that. I think the reason people want to be religious, nobody talks about religion. For me, I believe it's uh, people don't feel they have control of their lives. People want to fix. People want a quick answer. Kind of like a lot of these other institutes. They want like government. They want to be taken care of. They want to feel secure. So they come to these religions. Things going to fix their life for them. And you'll see this. People want to take accountability for their lives. And that's what a lot of this is because, you know, of course, people in poor countries believe in religion because it makes sense. Poor country people are struggling more when life is hope. When you feel life is hopeless and difficult and you're starving and things are hard, you're more likely to believe. And you don't you, you can't explain why you're less educated. You don't really understand why it's much more likely that you're going to turn to religion to solve your. You're going to turn to a belief figure to just to make it make to make, just make the day easier just to get through the day. You probably they believe in things as a way to cope because life is so difficult for them. And the reason life is so difficult for them isn't all, is often because of religion or because of these corrupt governments and entities that say they're going to take care of them, that they place their faith in. But see, when you take control of your own life and make your own life better, regardless of where you live, you have more control and agency. You can live a more quiet and peaceful and prosperous life. Because even here, people don't take control advantage of their own life. People blow their money. People don't plan, don't save. When things go bad, they want God to bail them out. But really, they want others to bail them out. And I've had a lot of family members who have this attitude. Well you know, God's going to take care of it. And then they want you to bail them out. But no, <laughs> bail yourself out, live, live your life intelligently and responsibly and take control of your own life and make the most out of it. And that's how you make your life the best it can be. And that's how you get a full satisfying life. You don't need religion to do it. You don't need to believe to do it. I mean, if you're religious, that's fine. If you, any of you listeners are religious, that's fine. I don't hate you for it. I don't have a problem with you being religious personally. I don't think it's necessary. You know, I talk to you and shake your hand. I don't mind. It's just I don't. It's not necessary to live a happy life or a good life. And even when I was religious, I had to admit that. I think that was a turning point for me. When I you had to admit that you don't have to be religious to be a good person. You don't need to be religious to be a caring person. You can do that without it. And then once I realized, once I admitted that and saw that more and more, I said, well, what do I need it for? And I think that's what caused me to take my turn on the that path that I am now, and I've been on for years. So, what do you think about this? Do you are you religious? Are you not religious? Do you feel you struggle this area? Do you feel you fall into any of this negative traits? Do you feel you know people who do it? Write about it, comment, post, read the article, post there, read watch the videos you can also post there. Check out the podcast as well. Like and subscribe to the newsletter for new and interesting content and transcend infinitely.